See, acting on professional commitments to the public is a very effective way to serve the company. That is, I know my company or my employer is giving me orders, but if I am a loyal employee, if I am loyal to my employers, it is simply not obeying my supervisor. I have an obligation as a good professional to the employer as well as the people around me. As an engineer, I should remember that my responsibility is to do everything properly so that the public around me are benefited by each and everything that I do. Okay, so professional obligations to the employer and to the public will strengthen one another and naturally as an engineer I will be serving the society beautifully if I am a professional and I am loyal to my employer. Now the third point is respect for authority. See I am head of the department of an institution so I have to understand that if my principal or vice principal tells me something, I am supposed to be or it is my duty to respect their authority. The organization or the institution has kept a director, kept a principal and a vice principal above me. So as head of the department, I am supposed to be respecting their authority. So wherever you are working, Wherever, as an engineer, especially when we teach the young engineers of today, let us give this feeling into their heart. Because today's society, having a big daughter and a big son, I can understand as a parent, most of us are more friendly towards our children. So respecting their authority is something that the young generation of today have not realized Maybe uh, as young engineers, we were more conscious about respecting our authority. See, authority gives you the right to make decisions, the right to direct the work, and the right to give orders. So if you have an authority, you have the right to make decisions, you have the right to direct the work, and you have the right to give orders. So this is one main point or main responsibility that as professors, as engineers, we should be teaching the young generation that is growing up into the future engineers of tomorrow. So authority actually is a legal right given to you by the organization so that you can behave authoritatively to your subordinates. So it defines areas of personal responsibility and it clearly shows accountability. See, I am accountable to my authority. Okay, so I'm supposed to be respecting my authority. Anybody who is above me, I'm supposed to be respecting. And I should be, able, I should be accountable to my authority. See, the institutional authority the institution actually gives a right to a person to exercise power. See, as a director, as a principal, as a vice principal, or as head of the department of a, a HOD or head of the department, everybody is given an authority by the institution. So according to the qualification, to meet certain objectives. That is, every institution has policies, Every institution has its own policies to allocate resources, issue orders, carry out the actions, give recommendations, etc. Okay, so the authority is given to each person. If each one of us exercises this authority properly, as it is given to me by the owner of the organization, so if the authority given to me is properly carried out, the institution is going to function very well. Okay. Now, see, there can be limitations. What happens is the owner of the organization 
may give authority to ineffective persons. So there what happens? Then the person will be unable to exercise the authority properly to meet the company's objective. So when the authority is given to a person, it should be very carefully analyzed that authority is in proper hands. Now, what do you call experts authority? See, each one of us has different skills. Every human being is given different talents. God is given very different. Each person is unique. So each engineer has got different, different skills. So the position of a special knowledge skill or competency to perform a particular task. So the expertise of a person should be considered when you make him or her the leader. When you give an authority, the expertise of a person should be considered properly so that the leader can effectively guide and motivate the people working with him or her. Okay, so this is actually called authority of leadership. See, the engineers, advisors, consultants, etc., they are basically given expert authority. That is, whatever is my expertise, I should be given that particular authority so that the institution is benefited. Now, what is the difference between authority and power? See, as a person, whether my organization gives me authority to be head of the department or not, if I am a person with leadership qualities, if I am a person powerful enough to communicate properly, so by birth, I have certain characteristics, isn't it? That is, each engineer by birth or as an engineer, if I have certain characteristics, that is actually the ability of the person to influence others to perform something. So if I am a powerful leader, I can influence the people working with me to perform beautifully. Okay, so this Power is actually gained by my own efforts. It is undefined, it is infinite. Because as a person, as an engineer, the power within me cannot be taken away by anyone around me, isn't it? But what is authority actually? Authority is given to me by my superiors. The owner of the organization decides what is the authority to be given to me. If I am made a supervisor of a firm, if I am made head of the department, it is defined and it is a finite authority given to me. That is, as an HOD, I have certain things to be done within my department. So that is what is called authority. But as an engineer, if I have ability to be a very ethical, smart leader, if I am a person who can guide forward the people working with me, that is a power which is inside me, which no individual can take away from 